How's it going? Right, obviously in the lockdown, uh, things are a bit tricky. So you might be out of your LJ, LGA, and this could be the closest river. Unfortunately, there's no fish here, but you can still practice your fishing. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys how to cast for distance. Now, this is a buggered old popper. Um, seen a few GTs in its time. And basically, I'm um, using the extractor popping rod, the 80 pound rod. Uh, it's really solid. Uh, you can flick and really use the rod as hard as you can to get as much leverage as possible. Um, it's quite stiff, really good for blooping. Uh, so I use this one for the poppers and I've got the stick baiting rod of course for the stick baits. But it holds its, its tip when you're jamming it down for a pop, so that's why it is a popping rod. Um, the stiff tip, it's not as soft. Uh, really comfortable rod, but um, I'm fishing 100 pound here. Uh, when, when you're casting for distance, basically you've got your dropper here, right? And that's the distance from the tip of your rod to your lure. Now, when you're going for distance, you actually want to have a lot more of a dropper than that. And if I'm going for GTs, and I want to cast as much, as, as, as far as possible at times, that's the way to do it. So, a long dropper will allow me to really use the pendulum action. So, when I'm using a pendulum action, I sort of come forward and then back and then on that I'll cast and I'm casting as it kicks back I'm fleeing and I'm really rotating the shoulders and the hips it's all in the hips and if you can get the nice little twist of that foot you'd be surprised how much power you're getting if you're just not using your arms if you use your arms you're only gonna get so far making it a full body motion is what does it and hopefully my dog does not go chasing this but if it does I've taken the trebles off anyway. Here we go. All right, not bad, probably about 50 odd meters. Now, what I would do if I was at home, or maybe you don't have this space, you could go down to a park, um, you'd look kind of weird, but you know, us fishers don't really give a rat's ass, but what you do is put a peg there, and then you go, all right, okay, I wanna see if I can beat it next time. I'm gonna try something slightly different to see if that works. Uh, so I know pretty much where I got to. I'm gonna do one more to see if I can give it a bit more oomph. And you wanna try different things to see what works for you. And when you can cast it and it's like a bullet, you're gonna get a lot more of a distance. Holy dooly! Alright, so that's going up that tree, which is a good, good, good distance away. I'll have to get the ladder and get that later. Anyways, put that there. Not what I wanted to be doing. Hopefully you guys could see the difference in the two casts there. Anyways, put it with the... Anyways, now I'm going to teach you guys the best way, the best sort of techniques to use for casting for accuracy. So with accuracy, instead of having that long dropper, you want to have a quite a small dropper. Uh, if you can, like if I have my Bowery outfit, I use the Cruiser, the tw uh, 25 to 30 pound Cruiser, uh, sorry, I think it's 25 to 30 pound, it's a three piece rod and it's 5.2 five, uh, five I think, or 5.6, so it's much shorter than this seven, seven foot rod. And that is because if uh, the shorter the distance from me to the rod tip, I'm in control a bit more. And that packs away really nicely, the cruiser. So that's a really good rod. But this is my uh, flathead rod, and sometimes I use it for bass. It's the Infinite. It's a lovely weighted rod. Uh, it's, it's possibly my favorite rod to use. It's really well weighted. You can cast it all day. It's quite comfortable. Uh, and basically, uh, I'll use this to cast a fish that live in the snag. So your Murray Cod, uh, bass, barra, all that sort of stuff. And it's really important uh, to, to get as close to the, uh, the snag as possible. Those fish will be living right in there, okay? So if you're casting a foot out of the zone, you're gonna miss that fish. Uh, they're, they're most likely gonna be held right under snags. And in that event, you know, uh, if your first cast, for example, is out of the zone, you might spook the fish. So you wanna be as accurate from the get-go as possible. I have had a practice, but I've set up a few different targets, and you can do this at home. It's a really good way to practice at home. Uh, 
yeah, you, you, you'll find that you get plenty of uh, better results the more you do this sort of thing. So how do I do it? Well, it's practice. And I'm going to use the lures that I would usually cast. So if I was using my bass lighter outfit, I'd use a surface lure that I'm going to cast on the day because that's going to allow me to get used to this outfit. All right, so again, dropper is shorter. Now, the tip of the day is from American Sniper. Aim small, miss small. If you aim for a larger area, like a one meter patch of water, then you're more likely to miss in a bigger way. If you're aiming for like a little bark, a leaf that's right in the strike zone floating, then you might miss by a bit less and you're gonna be a lot more in the zone there. So let's give it a crack and see if I can hit some of these targets. Now, I'm focusing on the target. I'd like to take a little bit of a deep breath before get whirling it out there, but you know, set your targets out. You can even do a runner where you're casting 50 things at once, but um, it's all about just having a go at home and keeping yourself busy in lockdown. You know, great time to be practicing knots. Go and try a few of our how to tie knot lures, uh, lures, uh, how to tie knots. Uh, it's all really, you know, gonna help you in the long run. I've learned a few truckers hitches and stuff in my lockdown. So focus on your target. And that is about 10 centimeters off straight away. So that's pretty good. I'm, I'm in the zone already. You can see I was overshooting and I sort of just clamped the spool. Obviously not ideal. You want it nice and smooth or out of the reel. Um, but let's see if I can go that again. And that time I overshot it by maybe a foot beyond it, which might've put me into the snag. So making these adjustments now is gonna help you in the long run. So as you can see, they're basically pretty close. But what, if you're finding that you're not getting in, in the zone straight up, it's a good idea to, to um, you know, really take your time with it. And, and this is the time to practice so that when you go out, you're gonna maximize your chances of catching instead of spending your time in the trees, grabbing your lures out. Uh, so use this time wisely and hopefully it gives you a bit of sanity uh, during these times, especially those in Sydney have copped it for a bit longer than the rest of us at this stage. Anyways, I'm going to go get this popper. Um, maybe, but we'll see. Stay classy, San Diego.